Uh, welcome everyone, I'm Jonathan Lipp from the Big Apple Film Festival, and thank you all for attending our conferences. Our festival is taking place this weekend, beginning today, going through Sunday night. The films are screening uh, virtually as well as a drive-in event. Uh, the drive-in screenings will take place tomorrow and Sunday um, at the Demarest Farms Drive-In Theater in Hillsdale, New Jersey. Uh, the films that are screening at the drive-in are also screened virtually, and of course we have our panels going on throughout the weekend as well. So this panel, titled Making a Film in Quarantine, fitting for uh, the times we're living in, uh, we have with <laughs> us the creator of uh, the uh, film Exit Package, is that film made in quarantine. Uh, we have with us John Gray, John Gray, the creator. Uh, then we have with us uh, mm -hmm partner Melissa Peltier and we have the cast we have Kim Wayans with us hi Kim how you doing hi I'm fine thanks oh, uh, we have Henry uh, Zerny Cherny good try <laughs> means black <laughs> you're not the first to, to, to do that <laughs> and we're supposed to oh, actually we, do we have Jason with us no we well, I'm just saying Jason is actually shooting today oh right um, like, so he, he said he would try to join us from his dressing room if, if he gets the chance. Okay, so, okay. And then we have Tim Griffin with us. So, hey, Tim. Hey, you pronounced it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we start off, um, let me uh, ask John, as the creator uh, of Exit Package, if you could tell us a little bit of, about the project and, and sort of the synopsis of the, of, the, of the film and then how it all came about. Well, you know, I, I try to do a short film every year if, if I can, two if I can, if I can really manage it. Um, and I had, a, uh, I had a film I was planning to make in May. Um, I had written the script and uh, we were just starting the very, very first bits of pre-production in uh, January. And of course, you know, this pandemic hit and it became clear that uh, even by May, we would not be able to be up and running and shooting anything. So, you know, we just sort of said, forget it, we can't do it. But I was so frustrated because, you know, I just love making movies of any kind. And, uh, and of course, I was having so many Zoom meetings like we're having right now. Um, it started to occur to me. In fact, I think I was in one particularly boring Zoom meeting. I started drifting. I started thinking, what would happen if, like, one by one, everyone on this call suddenly got killed? <laughs> yeah. no, no one really knew. You know? <laughs> I think that's what's sort of like the germ of it. And so I just thought, maybe this could be fun. We could, you know, we could, I'm sure the actors are, are, are eager to, you know, to work now because everyone's, you know, stuck at home and, you know, uh, people just love to jump on board something fun. And, and uh, so we put this together and Melissa and I, you know, we worked together for many years and uh, she's always been my secret weapon. So, um, you know, we developed the script and, uh, and I was lucky enough to get this fantastic cast. I know, it's an incredible cast. I guess it was like really good timing because, you know, nobody was like out auditioning or acting then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very true. So, how did you uh, how did you end up on board? Did this all? How did you end up? Collaborating? Oh well, we're married. <laughs> <laughs> and that helps. Well, yeah. That helps a lot. <laughs> That's actually and, quite astonishing <laughs> that you're. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, we just um, we made a film together. The first time we worked together on a project, not just me like weighing in with my opinionated you know ideas on his scripts and things. Um, was in 2010, we made a movie called White Irish Drinkers, which is a, a feature length indie. Great film. And, you know, you just never know when somebody you love, <laughs> you're working with them, you don't know, you just don't know. And we, we worked together really well and we had a great time. And we have been all along and we, we've never had a problem working together. We can't be in the all same right. room for Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Jason! Oh! What's up, Jason? Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Are you driving? Hi, Jason. I, no longer driving. No, I am uh, parked. <laughs> I am parked the car. The car is parked. Yes. Nice. It's awesome. It's beautiful. How are hey, Jason, you guys? Hey, Jason, you were great on The Undoing, by the way. I was been watching The Undoing. Oh, yeah. really, you were killed it in that. It's very kind. Great. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was a really oh, interesting I'm experience. It now. Oh, we're yeah, I'm watching it. Another one on us, John. Now I'm going to watch it. Yeah, yes. keep your eyes open for the doctor that's a foot shorter than Nicole Kidman. That would be me. <laughs> that's every doctor. 
Yeah. Nicole, who? I don't even see her when you're in the scene, Jason. Thank Nicole. you, Kim. Right. It's so nice of you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. <laughs> you're welcome. Sorry, where were we? Uh, in terms right of, here. Uh, so, of course, with a project like this, casting, of course, is a, a huge part of this because uh, it's all character driven. Um, so, you know, what, what were your thoughts? We'll start, we'll start with Kim. What, what were your thoughts when you first got the script? Did you know immediately this is something you had to do? Uh, what were your what were your thoughts when you first got the script? Um, I I read the script and I thought it was like really clever and fun, and um, also very uh, timely. You know, very <laughs> relevant to what was going on right now in the world. And um, I'd known John from a project we worked on together years ago called Reckless, a TV series for CBS that John was executive producing on. Um, so I knew he was a cool cat and I wanted to work <laughs> with him again. So I, I came aboard. Cool. And uh, then Tim, uh, you got the script and uh, did you know right away? Well, you know what's so funny is, and I'm going to speak for Kirk because he's not here and he'll love it. He loves it when people speak for him. But um, <laughs> so Kirk actually was the one that was first approached, I think, by John or somebody. The reps actually reached out me. and they got Oh, because I I uh, I know Kirk from from liberal Twitter. So. That's yes, he's he's quite the champion. And like yes, he's, yes. So he's yeah, already so in every Democratic him, think tank we ever have. So like uh, yeah. And he's such a good actor. So I just asked him, you know, if he'd be interested, and and he was really excited. He talked to John and got really excited. And then then he said, "I've got this friend." <laughs> yeah. So Kirk and I did a series. We did Prime Suspect together, and they put us together. And, and, and like they didn't realize that we were going to become like it was just one of those weird chemistry things that happened that they put us together and then they just started writing everything for us as like you know we we had nicknames on that show and so we've maintained a friendship forever so the weird twist on this script you know is that everybody gets to be isolated and safe in their own home with the exception of kirk we had to share the same space so it wasn't just about like who's a great actor that could step in and do this detective part who do i trust enough to be in my house with my family and expose mm -hmm. me so he reached out and he's like hey will you look at this script and do this <laughs> very <Whatever>. good <laughs> that's a great imitation and uh and it was actually <laughs> great because we like literally live half a mile <laughs> from each other so it was the easiest shoot i ever had i even actually wrapped around shot at his house, then zoomed back to my house to do the off-camera stuff from my Zoom. So it was like one of the most efficient shoots we've wow. ever done. It was incredible. Yeah. And, uh, and Henry, how about yourself? Uh, when you got the script, uh, were you, what, were, what were your thoughts? Hey, did, did you, is that for me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's to, to, for Tim. No, no, that was to you. Oh, yeah, oh me? Was, yeah. yeah, what Kim said. <laughs> Everything Kim said. All right. Worked with John before. He's a mensch. Uh, and I love the script. Great idea. Form, function, art, you know, beautifully blended together in a fine soup. And I was thrilled to be part of the flavor. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And, and Jason, uh, what were your thoughts when you first got the script? Uh, I worked with John as well a long time ago, and I had a terrible experience, so I wanted to <laughs> yeah. figure out a way to rectify that. Somebody's so, opened the can, thank God. John, John and I actually worked together when I was 14 years old and he was what 16 years old John no you were I was 14 years old we did a show in in uh where I grew up in Washington DC uh that was for PBS it was called Powerhouse it was 16 episodes it shot like in the early 80s and John was brought in fresh out of film school uh to to shoot an episode and uh, you know somehow we men ended up keeping in touch all these years and so you know i've always wanted to work with john again i'm shocked he's never asked me before this is the you know <laughs> really waiting come for the on cream. he didn't want to wait he said listen network not for you i want to do something <laughs> virtual online where we don't have to be in the same room um and something where the pay isn't so high <laughs> with no money, just, you know, low, ultra low budget. When I think of you, I think of ultra low. Um, no, it was, a, it was a, of course, John and I, we, we have brunch in the city, or we did pre, in the pre-times, in the early days. We, we, we brunch, you know, once a month at uh, some, some diner on uh, Broadway. And, and so Jack. we've been in touch. The Applejack, thank you. <laughs> and we've um, just kept in touch. So, of course, I was, it doesn't matter what the script was, I was going to do it. 
uh, and uh, this one particularly, you know, we were all sitting around going, wow, when, when do we work again? And suddenly somebody of John's caliber uh, says to you, I want to shoot a movie and you don't have to leave your house and it's all virtual. Of course you're going to do it. Yeah. So, John, in, in the last, I would say, six months or so, eight months, uh, I've been seeing a lot of, extra, uh, of sort of Zoom-made quarantine films. Uh, what, what's, what's the secret to really creating an effective film where everybody's essentially on Zoom? Um, what would you say are some of the key elements um, in, in creating a project like that? Well, I think, it, you know, in some ways, you, almost, you have to look at it like, a, like it's a play because you, you really are kind of stage bound, you know, in, in a way. Although, um, you know, I think it's important to try to make it as cinematic as you can. I mean, we try to weave in as, you know, some movement and, and, and so some blocking and just to sort of try to keep the frames interesting to look at. Um, and, you know, it's like everything else. It, it's just, it's all about story and, and the characters. And, you know, here you can't really hide behind your know, style or, um, you know, action. Uh, you really have to try to deliver the goods with with your cast and um, you know a compelling story um, and and you know characters who are really clearly delineated and are fun to watch. Yeah. And how do you go about and directing? Is directing sort of a different? Is it a different type of medium in, in a way? Directing in this fashion, like on on a Zoom conference. It was very strange for me because, you know, I'm used to being with the actors face to face, of course, like, you know, we're all used to working that way. So it was the first time I've done anything like this remotely. So it was very odd, but it helped, of course, that most of the actors, you know, were friends of mine and, and Kirk and Tim were just, you know, awesome and great, obviously great human beings as well. So, um, you know, it helped a lot in just kind of making it easy for all of us to, to you know, break down whatever, you know, break the ice as it were and just do this. And, you know, another key thing was, you know, preparation. Uh, we did a day of rehearsals. Um, and, you know, even though it looked like a simple piece, it was a little bit complicated in that, because as Tim mentioned, we had a scene where Tim has to come into Kirk's house. So we had to make sure we did that in a way uh, where Kirk could be gone from that floor of the house and, and not be, you know, near. So, you know, we had to do a lot, it was, it was a lot, a lot of pieces and, and, and we did, you know, we did traditional coverage. You know, we did sort of master shots where everybody was on camera. And then we went back and did single frame uh, close-ups of everybody. Um, and, you know, it was a little frustrating in that uh, I like to sort of talk quietly to the actors when we're working. And, you know, on Zoom, you just find yourself shouting. I don't know why. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> just assume that you're They're way over there. Right. They're all out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I was excited by it and, you know, we, we were very happy with it and uh, I learned a lot. It was like a huge learning curve because there were just so many things we didn't really know about what, what we have on the frame at the same time. And my editor was really helpful in, in being able to uh, swap out different frames that, that, you know, this performance was a little bit better here, this action was a little bit better there, so we could just kind of cheat them and cut them and paste them. Um, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do another one pretty soon. and. Uh, uh, I feel like I learned a lot from, from this one, and, you know, it's great fun. Nothing beats, you know, live and in person. Um, and I'm, I'm incredibly jealous of Jason right now, who's actually, you know, shooting and working on a set. Right. Um, but, you know, short of that, it's, it's a lot of fun, and, and it's, you know, very low tech. Um, yeah. and, and I'll tell you something, you know, not to just go on about it, but it's also very freeing. I found the low tech of it all very kind of freeing, because, you know, it's just not about the lighting and you're getting everything exactly right. Everyone knows what a Zoom meeting looks like. So you're not really hung up on that kind of thing. And short of just making sure everyone looks good and, and you've got some movement going on, you're just sort of free of the whole thing with, you know, 30 people on the crew and waiting for lighting and, you know, let's just try this again. It was just very freeing in that way and, and a lot of fun. John, did, did, did there, wasn't there certain things that changed based on what you had available? Like didn't Tim's character have to change based on wardrobe or something that you couldn't get or something like that? <laughs> Initially, Tim was, was a patrolman. Tim was actually a... You know, Thank a, God we uh, abandoned yeah. that. That was yeah. You could have sold that too, dude. You're good. <laughs> but we could not get a police uniform in time. It was like crazy. Because you know, obviously everything had to be done, you know, via you know, um, yeah. Amazon, via props, stuff. That, you know, um, I had to John, send John you know, sent me my props, my pills. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I had 6,000 of these. 
He sent me a big box of them through uh, through Amazon. I think. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, what a perk. Everyone at it. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just fun to do that kind of do-it-yourself sort of thing. But we could not get the police uniform, and and it suddenly occurred to me, oh, you idiot! Just make him a detective. You know, it didn't make sense to me. Like, why is the detective showing up? Well, maybe that that's they're already investigating these people, and and, and led to the funny line. I thought, you know. <laughs> Why are you a detective? <laughs> Him did so good. Why are you a detective? Great. That was a fun snark. I'm sorry, Henry. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mentioned, man. I was the only person on the same coast as uh, the director this time. So so my props weren't shipped to me. They were hand-delivered. I got a, a hand delivery of French toast and a can of baked beans. <laughs> wow. <laughs> made the French toast. Melissa, I think, yes. Sir. Melissa made the French made toast. The Thank you, Melissa. Melissa on that. I uh, delivered them. And you were delivery man in so that situation too, yeah. Involved? So uh, one more time. Oh, was is there, there a lot of editing, editing involved? involved? Yes, yes. You know, we, we really um, um, I have a great editor named Scott Boyd. He's cut all my shorts and and some other episodic stuff I've done. And your movies, and, I think. Uh, Scott has not cut a movie for me yet. I, I, soon, I hope. yet. Um, <laughs> uh, but he's a very smart guy, and and. Uh, he had never anything like this either. We were both were like, wow, what do you think? I don't know, well, let's, let's try. So we both learned, and what we did is we did a, um, a little rehearsal of our own with Melissa and I and my daughter and my daughter's friend playing all the roles. And we did them all <laughs> separate computers so that the editor could then take the raw material and just kind of experiment. Like, okay, how's this gonna work? And what can we move around here? And you know, we were both, we were all excited about what we could do. Um, so that, 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 you know, freed us up a little bit to try some more things during the actual. But there was more editing than you would probably think from, from you know, watching it. Right. Well, uh, what were the challenges for the cast in terms of, I mean, you're all, you're all veteran actors. You're used to traditional, you know, acting productions in front of the camera. What, what were maybe some of the challenges from the cast? If anyone wants to... The salary, dog. The salary. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? What? A, what? A, actually, a really difficult thing for me was uh, the timing because of the delay of uh, the yeah. lag in the Zoom, right. and you really are trying to like you have to cut off other actors. You have to you have to start anticipating things in a different way, and it it made it a little less than natural. Uh, so it took a little extra effort there, but uh, you know, otherwise, you know, it was it was kind of similar. You're really playing off everybody's every, what everybody else is doing for me at least. Yeah, and the funny thing was everybody had diff. We were all using our own Wi-Fi, so just like when you see satellite feeds on CNN or even like you know the Tonight Show or something, it's really based on how good your Wi-Fi is. Yeah. But the thing that it actually kind of worked for the overall thing because Kim, I noticed like poor Kim sometimes the audio oh. would go out and I'd be like, but it it worked. It kind of sold that this is a Zoom meeting because that's what happens in Zoom meetings, and I can't hear you. And I think Kirk had that great line about like. I'm sorry, you're you're muted. I can't I can't hear you, but it's like it's all actually after after we um, shot, I'm, John had me. I'm glad uh, I was able to help. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. The reality. John had me John had me say a bunch the, the character say a bunch of lines to cover for any glitches that might have happened nice. that might show up in the edit. So afterward there was just a whole series of lines. I don't think we used I don't think you used any of them, maybe one. I don't know. Is one of them. Yeah, we, we used one, yeah. Yep. Um <clears throat> John and Melissa, as, as producers, do you do you see this as perhaps a new genre of filmmaking? I think, unfortunately, it's going to be necessary, um, especially you know as we're heading into this next wave of the epidemic. Um, I think it's going to be necessary uh, to, to. I mean, uh, it's uh, as all of you guys know. I mean, that you know the shooting protocols, the safety protocols are pretty onerous, you know, and I just don't think every yeah. production can do that. Yeah, I just yeah, wrapped on a t I wrapped on a big budget TV show that I was like, this is the kind of show like it's like an NCIS show. They go, these are the ones that are never going to come back, and yet it's actually the opposite. They have so much money that I would get. And Jason, I don't know what's happening on your set, but like literally before I would get in the van, they would unwrap a brand new N95 mask and a blast shield. Every van ride I would take to go to set, tw tested twice a day, rapid test. I mean, it was insane and it must just but you're never going to get you know you're so never going to get little miss sunshine with that type of protocol like i don't know how the hell you're yeah, no, no. It, and it's it's yeah. so costly that um a friend of mine who um 
is producing a documentary with me. Uh, she, um, which we also have been doing virtually. Um, she uh, was up for a, a set, you know, set uh, safety person, COVID safety mm -hmm. job. And when she spoke to the actual production company, they really didn't want to do all those things. They were like, well, let's not, let's not overthink this, but you have to. I mean, well, you really do. And, and here, I mean, in what I'm working on now, they are super, super, super thorough about things. There's a COVID safety officer that takes each actor to set and stays with them the entire time, takes their PPE, puts it in a thing, and you don't take anything off until you are actually rolling. There's all right. these, and, th and they're testing a ton. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm here today is because a week ago I got a rapid test and uh, what it ended up being was a false positive. Um, I got a false positive in the morning, with it, you know, and th then they did two other tests that were negative. Then sent me to another place that was negative. Then they did a PCR that was negative. I didn't know how I could have possibly gotten it. I'm very, I'm very safety conscious about this stuff. And so I said, great, I got all these negatives so I can go back to hair and makeup now. And they're like, no, New York state rules is doesn't matter. You have to go home for a week. Oh my God. So, so they had to completely change what they were shooting that day, completely change it. Wow. So they're really serious about it, which is, yeah. is great. Wear a mask, people, wear a mask. But I, I think to answer the initial question, if I can, uh, I don't think um, virtual movie making like this is going to be like, all these, you know, people who are now working from home and they're like, wow, I don't need to go to the office. Oh, we yeah. can do this. I don't think there's, this is ever going to replace traditional movie making. No. And once things are back to normal, I don't think we're going to see a lot of Zoom movies again. No. It's, I think it's kind of like a found footage thing. You know, it's like <sighs> it'll be people will do it for now because that's what there is. You have to. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But I um, think you'll forever see Zoom reunions, though, you know, like like they've been doing to raise money for different right. causes, like the Fast Times the oh, yeah. High Reunion or the Lord of the Rings cast comes back together. That's actually a great tool because here we all all are spread across the country and we're able to check in at any time. That'll never go away. But I don't know if it's going to become a creative whatever. That's a good point. It is limiting. I mean, you know, I think that you can stretch it only so far. I, John, actually, he, I just read the script of his, his uh, new one, which is really good and very different. It uses, it's very different concepts. All new actors, better actors. <laughs> actors. What? <laughs> uh, but, um, it goes without saying. You haven't heard about it, John. I'm so shocked. But, yeah, <laughs> when, when I was the Harry, we basically decided to do, because I didn't, I was like not going to do it if I couldn't be there, like in the moment talking to people. And um, what we did was we would hire local um, crew, one man band or two, depending on how comfortable the person was. We'd either shoot outdoors if, we, if they wanted it, or some people were okay with it, one cameraman coming indoors and practicing safety. Uh, and then I would, they put a laptop on <laughs> next to the camera where I would be sitting and I would talk through the Zoom. And uh, th that was, it worked out really well. I mean, you can't tell really looking at the, the pictures. Only, there's only one where we had somebody shoot themselves with their 4K and, and they didn't get the, <laughs> they didn't get the framing right. And, and there was no way for me to see what the frame was. And uh, so it looks really weird. But all the other ones, it looks like just you know, as if I was there. I was there, I, we actually did a couple in person. We did a couple outdoors in person. We have a question here, and if anybody else has a question, feel free, feel free to put it in the Q and A box. Um, so we have a question here. I'm a, he says, "I'm a code." Uh, Muhammad says, "I'm a co-director of After Lockdown, an animated short that's part of the Pandemic Short Collection here at Big Apple Film Festival." In addition to figuring out how to produce a film in quarantine, how would you recommend we take advantage of networking opportunities like these in quarantine? Um, John, as a uh, seasoned producer, any thoughts on how? Well, networking yeah I mean I, I just say you know participate whenever you can and what's interesting for me is that you know I've got four short films right now uh, in the in the festival ether out there and um, in fact there are times when I've gone on panels and I've forgotten which movie I'm supposed to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. But, um, uh, uh, and, but, but what's amazing about it to me is that were it not for this pandemic I would probably not be participating in a quarter of the things that I've done because I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna fly to Kansas or, you know, Las Vegas or wherever there might be a festival that's having a Q&A. Um, 
but uh, you know, I've been in, in so many now. I've done panels like this, and uh, we've done filmmaking panels. So uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm not going to the answer really to that question, except to, to just uh, be aware and, and to research, um, particularly in film festivals, what's happening, um, what, what panels are happening with film festivals, what panels can you either participate in or at least you know, be a part of, because uh, there's so much going on in the q and I mean, just look at Big Apple Film Festival, look at their list of panels. It's, it's very impressive. It's a lot of stuff going on. Cool. Uh, and just take advantage of it. Thanks. And again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put it in the Q&A box. Uh, how would you recommend, uh, what are some strategies to prepare uh, in making a quarantine sort of Zoom film? What, 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 what are some of the main things you'd recommend to filmmakers who are looking to make an at-home movie? Well, I think you have to prepare in the same way you prepare for any movie. You know, I mean, you don't think about any of that stuff while you're writing it or, or you know, creating it, developing it. Um, you don't want to get bogged down and worrying about how am I going to do this. You just want to kind of, you know, do it, write it. And then once it's written, you have to look at it as a, you know, as a thing. It's, it, it, it like a, it's a mechanical thing. So what's the best way for my dogs are going crazy down there? Uh, so, you know, it's about it's a, you know, what's the best way to, you know, to shoot this and, um, and, and you know, figure out in block shooting, how do, how do I, what, what's the most economic way to do it? How do I do this so that the actors are as comfortable as possible? Um, and it's just a question of knowing exactly what you want and, and being able to rehearse a little bit. I think rehearsing is important, uh, even if it's Zoom, you know, it's just still great to everybody be able to just do a, a sort of table read kind of thing and get comfortable with the dialogue and the character and the questions. Um, but just it's like anything else, just about thinking about exactly what you want to see and how am I going to achieve that or we need to do in advance to be ready for that. You guys, I have to take off here for a sec. I have to split, but uh, good to see everybody. Kim, great Tim, Hank, great to see you. Good to see you, Jason. Come on, Jason. John, Melissa, I hope to see you soon. And uh, let's do it again someday. Right. Yes. Very much. Okay. okay. Cheers, Cheers, brother. Bye, you guys. See ya. Take Bye. care. So I was curious, um, is there, do any of the cast members, uh, is there any, for, for the cast members, is there anything um, about this type of performance that you actually perhaps maybe enjoy better than being in, on a traditional set? Like, is there anything about this that it's actually, you actually kind of say, oh, wow, this is actually, in a way, this is actually kind of better. You know, you're not gonna deal with the director as much. That's... <laughs> <laughs> same, you know, it's the same. I mean, you know, you're, you're if you want to do a close up, there you are, you're in your close up. It's convenient. Up. Wide shot, there you are. It's Boom. convenient. Roll out, of bed. roll out the bed. And, yeah, yeah. And come, come to work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to learn, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's not like you, you're not going to get, it, it's, you're not going to get a lot of takes. So one thing it is, we all had to become better at our own lighting, our own set up the cameras. And, you know, all now, right. now everything that we auditioned for, like big stuff there. Now you're like, nobody's meeting anybody. It's all virtual meetings. So this was actually great crash course, you know, mm -hmm. but at the beginning, oh my Lord, people like, you know, are sitting in the dark, talking, the audio's <laughs> off. It's just like, we've all become more proficient in that way. So we're better self-filming, but. And there's some know. very good cameras um, that you can, you know, use to upgrade your, your. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I did a film in, I was in 94, I did a film called Notes from Underground based on the Dostoevsky novella by the, with a guy. And a lot of it was narration. They were, you know, it was a flashback. Uh, the story is a flashback. And we were on a camping trip and it occurred to me we should, this was before the pandemic. And I said, you know, we should, we should reshoot that thing. Cause it was like, uh, it was a small film, interesting. And I thought, well, I think we could probably gather just to do it again after 25, 30 years, 25 years or so. And of course the pandemic hit and then, well, okay, forget it, never mind. And then he said, well, maybe we can just do the Zoom part. Maybe we can just do the narration and cut it into the flashback that we shot in 94, which was 12 years <laughs> past, you know. The, so cool. we did it. He's in England. We set up a Zoom where I was, the, the footage was going straight through um, the EOS R through a cam link into the computer. He could see the footage directly. Uh, so we, and it was a night shoot. Uh, in a trailer, I, we set up the lighting, I built the props, I did cut the curtain, all that stuff. And then you got it all set up and then you shoot, but you got to get it all set up before you shoot because 
uh, you don't want to be wearing a set, you know, set yeah. deck, uh, all those hats, they, they've got to be done, you know, practice the lighting, make sure we've got what we need. And basically there were gooseneck lamps going side, you know, uh, so it was, a, it was, and then, so we're cutting it now. And uh, right. it's, it's, it's an cool. extraordinary project and perfect for this to a certain extent, because it was all in there, not all, but, yeah. but a great deal of it was narration. So now you have a film that's 25 years in the making. Which is pretty wow. cool. That is cool. That's real cool. Yeah, no CGI I, I necessary. So. As you were saying, animation. Cool. I think animation is going to be. Um, uh, yeah. It's really going to happen in more creative ways and more people doing it. Well, we also we had a question here uh, from Susan. What are some cameras you recommend for doing it? Um, well, we just use the regular zoom camera for this one, but you bought. Um, I have uh, here. I actually have it right here. I just this is my little Logitech. <laughs> um, we used this a couple times for we experimented with sort of a studio in a box for the documentary. So we got this camera, and it does it does take a great picture, but it's not you know it you look better. It's 4K, but it doesn't record in 4K, mm -hmm. and we couldn't figure out how to do that. So we ended one up caution thing that that we learned on this is that. If you do decide to use a, a camera outside of your own computer, <coughs> everybody must use the same camera, right? Uh, because of some, you know, the, the normal zoom is thirty frames a second, f uh, but but some cameras are twenty four to some cameras right. are twenty three. Uh, if you have people using different frame rates, it can be a nightmare. So that's yeah. one thing. If you're going to use a separate camera, just make sure that it's it's, it's uniform and everybody uses that camera. Didn't you guys send cameras to to everybody in the cast, and then we all just yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we ditched actually, them and uh, said, just use our own. Yeah, we bought the cameras. Um, and when we did tests with them, um, you know, did, did, oh, they were different. The, the color was all off. The colors were you know, bad. They were too bright. And they actually didn't look as good as, as, as the yeah. webcam. Yeah, so yeah. We, yeah. We just packed it up and sent I, them back. But I will say that if, if you can get an EOS R and a cam link thingamajig that where you can feed it right into the, your... Um, uh, feed it through the HDMI into the USB. There's a, tr a converter that you can get. And you, uh, and the thing is, the newer cameras, and I'm talking about Canon now, but I'm sure Nikon mm -hmm. does this. Thing. It'll fo follow focus, so you can have you you can it'll follow your focus, and your image ah, is fantastic. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it does require you can rent the cameras, rent the lenses if you want, and they're all autofocus. You know, set your aperture and your you know your frame rate and and all that, and off you go. Well, this yeah. is this is basically like an upgraded, web, uh, you know, yeah, webcam. webcam. Um, but it has its own little light source, and it's it takes the video. It's four K. It moves. And it's got a great a microphone. It's a Logitech. Yeah. 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 Huh. All right. Thank you. Uh, Anika has a question. Um, she says, "Thank you for doing this panel. I'm wondering about setting." since that tends to be a really important aspect of cinema. How did you navigate that part of the filming process? Did you put a lot of stock into customizing the cast homes to be in line with their character? <laughs> or is that not as big of a concern? Yeah, I really wasn't. I mean, what we did was, in, in, a, in, a, in the days prior to our, even our rehearsal, I spent a little one-on-one -on -one time with each actor, and I just asked them to kind of, except for Tim, because Tim... We was going to use Kirk Chats, to bother yeah. with Tim. <laughs> but uh, I asked every actor to kind of give me a little walkthrough of their home. And, you know, we decided which, you know, this has good depth. This is where this, you know, this, this will work great. And one of the great things about what made it so easy with this particular piece is that it's supposed to be just people working at home. So it doesn't, you know, there's no specific set. There's no police station. There's no, you know, it's just, it's just people's homes. So, um, uh, you know, it was, it was just really easy. And it was just a matter of finding space that gave us some depth and, and funny angles that you would make it look you know good and and, uh, and, just, and again just taking the time to prepare and do a little you know, virtual walkthrough uh, to figure it out thank you and julio asks post covid are there any are, are there one or more things you believe would make the film industry better in terms of development and production that you may have noticed during COVID? what would it be um do you mean, in other words, does he mean that um, uh, something that has developed because of COVID? Yeah, it sounds like something that may have developed during COVID that may actually make things better, maybe, once it's over. Yeah. 
I, I don't know. I mean, it's such a, you know, this kind of Zoom movie making is, is such a separate animal. Um, I don't really know how to answer that. I don't know if there's anything that, that we will directly take from this, um, except just a larger picture, which is that you can never stop being creative. You know, you, you just, um, you, you must find a way if that's what your bent is. Well, I can say from reporting back from like one of those big budget sets, there's changes that are just, they're just never going to be undone even after the pandemic. Like they, they bifurcated everything where it used to just be like, is a big mishmash. Everybody's one cast and crew. Any department can go talk to, hair and makeup can come up and touch up the actors. Now everybody's like, you're in A pod, you're in B pod, you're in C pod, and there's no crossover. You have like designated people. And it actually kind of streamlined the process. Sometimes it's frustrating when you're an actor and you just feel like you're getting talked to by 12 different departments. Now they're like, everybody just has like one liaison, which if you, if you prefer more sort of input, then maybe it's a downside for you, but they definitely sort of regimented and streamlined the, the process, I think as a safety measure in case somebody from the camera department goes out or some, an actor goes out, you're almost like isolated. Like it's an outbreak, like a pandemic where you sit there and go like, okay, just like what happened <laughs> with Jason, Jason is gets a false positive. Now they have to reroute the scenes. And so it just, that's, I think, going to stick. I think this is going to be the framework going forward where you're not going to have Video Village with 40 chairs oh. where everybody and the producer's friends get to sit there and whoever, everybody's invited to Video Village. Now it's like not essential only. You're, you have to be there. You're an essential person. Right. So that, that kind of sometimes streamlines it, maybe. I don't know, but we'll oh. see. Interesting. A lot of the, you know, the people who are watching now are emerging filmmakers and screenwriters. Should they be writing their scripts now in a different way than perhaps they would have maybe a year ago? In sort of, you know. That's, you know, that's a really good question because my experience so far in developing projects for networks uh, and, and studios is that no one really seems to know what this post COVID world will look like uh, in terms of what people are looking for in entertainment, what, what kind of show people want, what we're going to respond to. And so I, I, I face it myself when I sit down and write a script. It's like, how do you write a subway scene now? <laughs> you know, how, how do you mm -hmm. do um, And, you know, I am, uh, in my own writing, you know, I'm just assuming that there's going to be this, you know, there will be a vaccine, um, but that there will be remnants of this for, you know, probably decades to come in the way people relate to each other. And, you know, are we, are we ever going to shake hands again? Um, so uh, you, you, I, it's another answer that's very difficult to come up with, but my advice is just to sort of uh, go a couple of years in the future and, um, and assume that there's a vaccine, <clears throat> and, but people are still being cautious and still, um, and, and there will of course will always be those who will never be cautious no matter what, uh, and those who, who are gonna be cautious still, and, and, uh, and there's, there's good conflict there. Would you, do you think that there's a market for uh, Zoom Films and do you think there'll come a time, if not if it's not here already, where people will literally rent these type of films on Amazon? I think it depends on the film. Yeah, yeah. If it's relevant and oh, powerful story, and evocative, really. and uh, you know, uh, gets your mind going about, you know, makes you question what you're doing with your life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, there's a, a Zoom movie right now playing on the uh, on the streaming service Shutter. That's uh, good. And it's called Host. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's a seance. You know, it's a brilliant idea for Zoom movies. You know, brilliant. Right. And it's really scary. It's, it's you know, it's fantastic. So it's I think like, like any, you know, if something really breaks out and, and becomes really, you know, it's a great story. Um, yeah, it will, it will become. I was uh, hoping the exit pass package was going to be a, a, like a pilot. <laughs> right. Dude would come back. He didn't really die. He was just fake. Right. Right, right. <laughs> he would add that code at the end. He just gets up, pushes himself. Off. I was thinking about that actually. After we after, after we rehearsed it, I thought, what if after he just gets up and closes his computer? That, that, <laughs> just, that, that was just vanity speaking. <laughs> would you consider uh, continuing on with with the Zoom type of films? Would you continue on? Do more of these? Maybe turn it into a whole series of sorts. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to keep, I want to keep making movies. Uh, 
And so I'm going to try to keep doing that, whether I can do them on sets with, because, you know, with making short films, of course, there's no way I can afford the kind of protections and things that we have to do now. I just, I can never afford to do it. So I don't know how long it's going to be for me to be able to, to go out there and just make a short film again. Um, but I'm going to just continue making, you know, these kinds of, if there's no way I can do it, you know, this is how I'll do it. I think, I think, uh, this is the last question. Um, I think a lot of, uh, uh, people in the, in the film industry or people who are working to, be, to get into the film industry are curious about which direction it's going in and if people are actually working right now or movies being made right now. So I just want to ask the cast, are any of you working on projects right now? Jason was, he had mentioned, Kim, are you working on anything right now, live on set? Um, I just finished directing an episode of um, a Disney show, live and on set. Um, and that was... It was intense, you know, as Tim pointed out, they've got all these new protocols in place and there's a guy with like a six foot long stick with a ball on the end of it. So when you go to talk to somebody comes and he like gets between you to make sure you keep six feet apart from each other and you have the mask on and you have a, a what's that, the plastic shield and, um, you know, but you're working. So, you know, thankful for it. But, um, it's 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 intense. All right, and, and Tim, did that answer? Your yeah, yeah. No, so there is there is happening. The production is is happening. Um, Tim, yeah, I I was actually shocked to go back to work because I was like, and especially on uh, on something that I never thought. Like I thought I thought maybe the single camera, like the office type thing, where you can literally write and tailor the episodes. You know, I remember when we were doing uh, when Kirk and I were doing Prime Suspect the writers would tell us, the producers would be like, we're gonna do a bottle episode. And it was like literally an episode that maybe one location, it's cheap, we were all locked down in the precinct and we can control the set. And they do that sometimes for budgetary reasons or because we need to pop in this script that can appear anywhere in the season. So it's just really creative, but I never thought like kind of like the big sprawling, you know, you know big action things could happen. But I guess if you have money, you can. I have noticed recently there is a new trend where you get these re like, hey, could we could you go on tape for this movie that's gonna be and everybody was just over ambitious. Like we're gonna come back in September. And you just watched every really every projected date get pushed and pushed. Now it's actually happening. People are actually going into production. So I think we've reached a tipping point where where stuff is actually gonna happen. And sometimes they're like yeah, I was going to do, go do a movie in New Zealand and we we're all going to fly out in January, quarantine for two weeks and like cast and crew. And that was, that was the way that I thought it could come back. You just have to like literally lock down your location. Nobody leaves the, but that's a very specific movie that you can make. maybe make a horror movie where everybody's in one farmhouse and everyone's staying in the same hotel and nobody can get infected or New Zealand where nobody's going to get infected, but they're doing it in LA. Like LA production is, is ramped back up. Like, just like Kim said, you're directing, there's shows that are happening now. So, and I don't know. You're working now as well? Mission Impossible. Yeah, and they're going, uh, they're going through some really tough stuff. Norway, we had weather, you know, we had people staying on cruise ships. So that's the way they, you know, uh, you get tested a lot. Everybody's very conscientious. Nobody wants, you know, to be patient zero. Uh, so people are very, very conscientious and, uh, but it's, it, I mean, it's, it's a logistical labyrinth for them. Uh, they have great people, of course, working on it and making sure that everybody's safe masks and, and, uh, you know, you just got to be real responsible about it. All right. Okay. Yeah. And John, if you could just tell us exit package, where, where can it be seen? I and mean, it's in this festival now, but after the festival's over, can you tell us where else it can be seen? Any other uh, festivals? Or yep. It, it's 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 on, it's a kind of on the festival circuit right now. Um, we'll probably put it back up on YouTube when when that when the festival circuit has, you know, when we feel like it's it's run its course. Um, but right now it's just is playing in, you know in, in we're entering it in the festival as much. I'm trying to withhold it a little bit, hoping that um, I can get to festivals where we can be in theaters again. Um, you know so. Uh, uh, I've been, we, we have been in many festivals, but we're trying to kind of just hold back a little bit and maybe go with the festival now they're going to be screening next September, next October, hoping by then maybe we'll be able to have some sort of, you know, just, I was hoping that drive-ins would come back. 
I mean, that's so great that you're doing a drive-in screening. And John and I went to one in um, upstate New York, uh, and it was um, it was great. It was really great. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, there's one in Warwick, and I think another another one up in Woodstock, and then yeah. in New Jersey that we're using. And, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, we could bring the dogs. <laughs> it's great. So, all right, I want to thank you all for being here, uh, Kim and Tim and Henry. Thank you. And of course, thank the you. Creator of Exit Package, John Gray. Thank you all so much, and thank you for Thanks, all John. being here as well. Good yeah. seeing you all. Bye, guys. Good Thanks, John. Good seeing you all. You all. Great Bye. to see everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.